What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I am here with NFT himself. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, for sure. It was uh, it was cool. You know, obviously bad circumstances, but it was nice to see you recently and uh, kind of you know get a chance to to talk to you because we've met a couple times just in, in passing at like Nam and stuff like that. But yeah. it was cool to you know have a have a beer and just talk for a bit and. You know, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, it's it's nice to it was nice to catch up with you like in an unprofessional way. You know, normally, yeah. especially at those kind of NAM stuff, so I've got my head on the swivel and I'm I'm there to promote a string or whatever such nonsense NAM's about. You know, so <laughs> doing the demos. Of that. Yeah, yeah. That's such an interesting culture to me. That that whole NAM convention. Like I I've been going. I've gone the last three or four years now. And I'm not even, I don't go because I'm sponsored. I'm also not like in a band. So I don't, not, not anymore <laughs> anyway. So I don't need any of the pitching that gets done there. Like I'm not yeah. buying, you know, uh, a lot of people approaching me like, oh, so what's up? You, you, you know, what, what band are you with? And I'm just like, no, no bands right now. Don't. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, just I'm usually, here. I'm just here to hang out, meet friends that are in town that, um, are here for this and you know also just I, I like gear and i like being in the in the in the scene so it's cool to just talk to people and see cool things see new technologies and yeah and also some uh, like small intimate performances that people do every once in a while yeah so uh, is that something you've been how long have you been doing that i know you got your own uh like you got your own sound now even for sale you can buy a program with yeah your sound. <laughs> yeah i do I, I never thought about it that way, but I, de I do. Um, I think I've been going to NAM for uh, over a decade. Some some years I get to skip out because of tour or something. And I guess I say get to because I, when I look at it, I think of it as a, a business thing. I do think of right. um, and, and I've tried to rework that actually in my, my brain lately. Um, and it, and for the better, for sure, because it, it used to just be like this big daunting thing and I've got anxiety. And it just intensifies and i know i'm gonna to have to be there all day and do all these things um but i started taking my wife and i started um and then just trying to think of it more as what you just said like a get together with friends i don't i haven't seen in a minute you know mm -hmm. like I, I see a lot of people on tour but you know i also miss out because a lot of those friends are on tours in a different night whenever i'm in their hometown vice versa and it's one of the few times that you like get to see them so i i try to look at it like that in the past two years of um I can I can say honestly that it's been fun, but I definitely try to make it. I make the schedule kind of work to my my advantage too. Like I'll, if I I'm like, look guys, I'm available on this Friday, and I will I'll be there from 8 a.m. if you want me to. But that's the only day I can do stuff. Does that work with you? And most of uh, the people that that help me with gear and things are have been accommodating with that as well. You know, Dang, they get you, it. Got, you you have to man. You have to yeah. you have to have uh, time to. Do something else and be there, be around the area, but not like yeah. on the show floor. Like I've been trying to limit my show floor time too because it's, uh, it's so it's so much. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just I, I realize it goes hand in hand with a lot of musicians of like uh, the traveling salesman aspect of hey man I can I can sell you this music well what's the difference of selling you this pedal? But it, it is really different to me. Like for me it's more traveling and playing playing music is so different than me being like how many hours can i sit here and be like you need to buy this pedal you need to check out these cables you know, like i it's not it's not me man but yeah. i mean I've, then i'm happy to do it for people that that help me along the journey you know but it's it's definitely not in my my normal wheelhouse you know it's a once a year thing for sure absolutely yeah it's 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 a def you, you can't do that year round you know no it, it, <laughs> I, I can do i mean that's why i don't have a regular job you know yeah yeah. I would go work at Guitar Center if I wanted to do that all year. So uh, I see here that you're also known as the doctor. Can you can you explain mm. that to me? <laughs> Why are you uh, the doctor? Um, it's I I don't, I don't know how to really describe it without sounding really pretentious, but it it just it was just a name that came up forever ago. Whenever um, the first band I had that really did anything started fresh out of high school for me. And we were playing, um, we started just playing in the Tulsa, Oklahoma bar scene area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not from there, but I lived there uh, for a decent chunk of my life. And um, one of my dear friends, still a dear friend, Brian Jewett, coined that 
it, and I, it was something to uh, along the effect of being proficient every night, like steady hands, you know, all the time, no matter how much we were drinking in, in those days or yesterday or whatever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's cool, though. That's cool. Yeah. That's, I like that nickname. I mean, it's a, in uh, in Jersey and all that. People call each other doctors a lot when they're like when you're like you said, like stable or steady kind of uh yeah. intelligent like all oh, the doctors here <laughs> I, yeah i mean it's a it's a very endearing i'm glad i'm glad that he thought of me as as being that cool but i think he still does we'll see i'll call him later <laughs> <laughs> so so you you have on uh uh you know your name is obviously neil timon but and neil fucking timon 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 sorry yeah. my bad timon okay. so neil fucking timon uh but the short nft thing like it's fitting with all the things that are going on with NFTs now and in, in the, the cryptocurrency world, right? Yeah, uh, that's that's the damnedest thing. I don't, you know, like I, I don't know a lot about it. I've had, I've had to learn a lot because if I've been using that as a um, as a brand for myself for for years, I, maybe five years or so now. It started like a little bit before I joined Devil Driver, so that would be. I've been in Devil Driver for for six and a half years now, so it'd be like seven years maybe. Wow, I've been doing it for a while, um, but I never was really. I never got into digital art. I'm still not, but um, I have to respect it. I mean, I it's making money and it's also getting out my initials. I mean, you know, obviously my middle name is not fucking, but uh, <laughs> you know, seeing it out there helps, and and it and it gives a lot of friends a laugh too when they see it in the news, you know. Yeah, I still don't get it. I mean, I read about it and the non fungible token and digital art yeah. and all that stuff. But I mean, I don't know. I, it, maybe I'm just too old school. I if I'm going to buy art, I want it. I want it in my house. I want it in my hands. I want to frame it. I want to put it on my wall. I don't want a file. That sure. I, you know, you know yeah, I mean, I mean the, the tangibility is an aspect for for me too. Um, yeah. And I and you could definitely get much wiser people on the subject to explain it. So I'm, I'm not even going to try, but it's, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, I get you. I, I think that's part of the whole thing is the intangibility, Yeah, you know, compared yeah. to a, just a normal painting that, that you've got on the wall. Yeah. It's weird. It's, and you know, I've kind of, I've adapted to it with other things like movies. I used to collect DVDs and stuff. I don't mm -hmm. do that anymore. You know, I just stream everything cause that's easy. Right. Um, but I've, I've also kind of done it with video games. I used to collect, I still have my old games, but like, I don't, I don't buy new video games physically anymore. I just play it on my phone or whatever, you know, on digital download or something. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think I can make that transition with art or, or books even. Like, I still can't do, like, uh, a Kindle or anything like that. I can't do ebooks. I got to have a book. So that, I, I was exactly that way until I got a Kindle. Really? I, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty avid reader. Like, a, um I, I didn't have this fact on hand, but it's just me and my wife were talking. She was asking yesterday. Um, and I, I figured that I, I read like an average of about two hours a day right now, which is nice. But I'm fortunate that I have the time to do so really as well. It comes down to, but um, I read a lot and I used to always be like, no, oh, I need the book. I need the smell, the feel of the paper. Right. And yeah. like the, the Kindle, among other, you know, products out there, they try to say it feels like a page when you turn it. It, it doesn't really, but, <laughs> um, but just the the ease of it, like just being able to to travel and fly and have, you know, all I, your, I don't know all how your you books. can actually store in there. But yeah, but I mean, I could have the choice of twenty books that I've been meaning to check out over over a flight. I've got and I can pick all those. Where there's no way I'm carrying twenty books in a backpack. You know, like it used to be like three. I carry like three books on tour. And yeah. that was still like, man, these are in the way, this little stuff. And now I have the Kindle, which is like just twice the size of my iPhone. And it's got anything I can want. You know? Yeah. No, I mean, I guess the convenience factor, definitely, for traveling. And it's been, it's been hard to go back. I've, I've had people um, send me books, like for Christmas or, you know, whatever. And uh, and, I, and it's just like, oh, and I get this feeling like, oh, man, I have to like really read this. I have to think about a light in my room. <laughs> Do all these things like that. So it's... Uh, it, yeah, I definitely have flipped over on that, but I'm, I'm but I'm with you on the art. Like it's, I, I think it just comes from me not understanding it. We we collect paintings, and um, and my wife is a painter herself, nice. so she's she's relatively in about that scene, you know. But we, it's, we don't own any digital art yet. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just one thing I just don't get into. 
I think I think I'll just. You, you don't it. have to be into everything. You don't. Yeah, I mean, right. that's, <laughs> well, that's something that I, I feel like I wish I would have been told that when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, because you, you you wanted to be a part of everything. That's also kind of developed the uh, current state of social media with people in that FOMO thing. Like, oh, oh totally. uh, I'm missing yeah. out on the show or the party or the you know, like yeah. I want to be a part of that. And it's it's you can't like you can't be a part of everything. It's just do yeah. what you can. Um, but go, going back a little bit to on the books, you said you're reading so yeah. much. Like, what are you reading? What kind of books are you into? Um, I'm mainly into like sci-fi and horror books. Um, okay the like i'm just now finishing up duma key it's a stephen king book that I, I just hadn't i'm kind of checking off that list every once in a while i read all like the what would be considered the best of of his so i'm kind of checking off the the less known ones um for that i read this book called the the wanderers um his wanderers by chuck uh wendig hmm. um i don't i don't i don't know him so i don't know if that's how you say his name but um it was really good just a, a sci-fi thing. I think they're going to make it into a TV show. Um, nice. I, I reread some, uh, I, I really like Game of Thrones and mm. I reread one of the Game of Thrones books this year. Um, that's it. I, I, I really got into like, um, I can't remember the exact name for it, but it's, uh, it's where they, they take a certain aspects of a historical story and then they change it to make it into a horror or something like, um, fried prejudice and zombies or whatever. <laughs> so I, I didn't read that one, but yes, like that, that title seems to sum up what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, historical something. There, like, that? Yeah, Abraham uh, Lincoln, vampire hunter. Is that was, was that one of them too? Something again, like that? one that I didn't read, but yes, it was right on the money. What I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I was spending like too much time because I'm forgetting the name of it, but there's this great show about uh, this crazy old um, demigod, like snow polar bear type thing, where they he was like hunting the ship that got stuck in the Arctic. Um, and they did a they did a TV show about it as well. It's a great book, and of course, cannot remember the name, but. There's so many books. There's so many series. <laughs> yeah. Like when, when I go to Target and I walk I by the just aisle. Made a yeah, right. Yeah, the Polar Express uh, 3D. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I, I, there's like the owl and the, you know, there's there's always, and they all become movies and series and, or TV series or Netflix series. Yeah, for better yeah. or worse. Yeah, I mean, I, I love reading as well. I collect a certain number of books, but I, I kind of try and branch it out. Like I have some old, and whenever I go to an old bookstore, I'll pick up whatever old sci-fi books I can find that have like cool yeah. covers. I'm like, I'll read that. I'm, you know, the title sounds interesting enough. I'll read it. Um, but, you know, I was obsessed for a while with, with Chuck Palahniuk. Palahniuk, course, yeah. Palahniuk. I don't know his name. Um, I've read all his books and and even books that aren't so intellectual. Like, you know, Christopher Moore writes a bunch of these really funny um, takes on kind of traditional things. Like, it's a vampire book called You Suck. And it's about vampires. But it's all comedy. It's not. Uh, you know, it's like the, it's not like Interview with a Vampire or something, right. or Ice or something like that. You know, and he also has one called A Dirty Job, which is a guy. It's death, but he's got a daughter, and now his daughter's growing up as death, like she's getting the power of death. Okay, so it's and like he's trying to like he, she was like oh doggo, and she touches the dog and it kills it, and it's just you uh, know like he has yeah. to teach her about these things. I'm like that's interesting. You know, it's it's an easy read. You said it was Chris Moore. Chris Moore, yeah, he has yeah, the, the one up. that yeah the one that got me was called Lamb, where it's a story of Biff or I think his name is Biff, the uh, Jesus's best friend during the time that Jesus isn't spoken about in the Bible, okay, it's thirteen to thirty three time period, yeah, and and it's like a gospel of this his best friend going on adventures with him, learning about you know how Jesus invented um, lattes. <laughs> <laughs> and like That's yoga really and stuff like that so it was just yeah. hilarious it's a hilarious little you know thing i'm not a very religious person i just thought it was funny and uh yeah. and then i from there i just went and got all the other ones but uh wow. so away from books and and towards music uh you know yeah. everything everything's reopening uh shows are happening i have t i have tickets to a concert i'm excited you know like the world isn't completely over so what are the plans right now for you with devil driver like are you guys do you have a tour lined up and everything uh 
no tours yet that I can that I can talk about. The the main one thing we're doing this year, it's not looking like this year's going to be too big for us. Besides one show that we have, it's in um, September twenty fifth, and it's uh, it's in Florida. Like I think it's in Orlando ish area. I think it's called uh, Rebel Rock. Okay. Which I would have written that down. I'm Rebel Rock sure sounds Rock. right. Yeah, Rebel yeah. Rock sounds right. It's a, it's gonna be a big festival. I think uh, Five Finger Death Punch is the headlining the day that we're playing. Nice. But okay. we're yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, it's just been slow moving for us getting back into it. We want to be careful. We don't know what's happening. You know. Yeah, Deftones just canceled their tour with Gojira. Apparently, I saw it like right before. Yeah, really? Early. Yeah. They were like, look, we're not ready. There's, you know, too many venues are putting up issues and, yeah. you know, canceling last minute shows. Like, we can't hit the road and get to a venue and then it's not happening, you know? Of course. Um, yes. So they're, they're just like, it's just better if we just wait more. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not, for, you know, for fans of Devil Driver, I, it's not fun for us either. Like, we're, we're champing at the bit over here. We want to play. We're, I'm, I'm sitting on like about 30 new demos that I've written besides the record that's already recorded and hasn't come out. Like we're, we've been doing stuff. We're not sitting here to like torpid or anything, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. We want to be there too. Yeah. But well, it, it is, it is really hardening to see, like I have some friends, um, in bands that, uh, like Heart Effects, they just had their first show back. They're doing a little mini tour, like, I want to say like nine, 10 days they're playing and it's sold out. It's great. Yeah. Insights, another uh, band that friends of ours, and they're out in Texas right now doing well. So th there's light there. It's it's just yeah, it's it's hard to see, especially like the bigger bands like Deftones, Gojira. That's that's uh, that's bad news. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one, mm -hmm. and and I get it too. I mean, there's too much uncertainty. Yeah, uh, and, and we don't want to rush into it either because then we'll just end up back in the same bullshit. You know. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. the main idea is we want to be safe, and it sucks that it's been this long that we've had to stay super safe. And it's just like, fuck, already, let's just do it, whatever. But the number one thing is the safety, and we don't want everybody to get sick and get, you know, I guess at this point, if you're getting vaxxed, it's not really like the death you're too worried about. It's just having anything that's lingering effects from it. Yeah. And, but then the, the number two thing is the money is. If a, a band goes out like that, if like, you know, take Deftones, for example, if they go out and they 10 shows cancel that tour, then they're all in the hole serious, you know, mm -hmm. and any band of, of any size would be that way if that happens. And that's a reality that's happening. So I get it. Yeah. And with the Deftones, like they got such a big crew that that's, you know, it's not just yeah. them getting, taking the hit. It's the whole exactly. family, you know? Yep. Um, it, it's a rough one, and you know you you've done well for yourself, I think, with you know putting out your own your your it's a Kemper, am I correct? Yeah, oh, it's it's for Axe Effects as well, but yeah, it's uh, through a company called STL Tones selling packages that sounds that we got together and recorded off of my amps. So you you do that you 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 also do like gear reviews, beta testing as well. Yeah, um, that's I mean that's it's less glamorous it's not like out there i'm not doing any any videos yet um i would say stay tuned about that there might be a different different story in the, the coming weeks but yeah as right now it's just kind of being at home um that's yeah that's what i do day yeah. to day and and but you, you you're staying productive and a lot of bands haven't really there's just been taking the time off maybe you know uh yeah i mean i, I get it though i get it it's it was it was really hard that first like i think i did it since since lockdown in mid-march um i was about to go i had a flight booked on march 15th to go out on a tour and then it got canceled uh like that day and that first month i was like i was just kind of sitting at home being like what the fuck is going to happen with my life what's gonna happen and then like i'd have an okay month and then a terrible month and then i remember in the fall i was like like, what am I going to do? Am I even going to, like, I can, of course can write and record at home, but my real passion, my real life's blood is traveling and playing music. Um, and the combination of the two. And I was like, man, I maybe have to seriously reconsider what I'm, what I'm doing with my life, you know, if, mm -hmm. if it's not going to be available. And fortunately I've come back around, you know, right now I just, like I said, I, I, I have hopes. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go out on tour next week, but I have hopes. And 
it feels it's a, it's a good day today about it you know yeah but yeah, I, I, I mean, totally understand those people that did just shut down and, and haven't put out anything out or done anything i get it it's, it was a really scary time it still is i get it yeah absolutely i mean that that is one positive thing if you want to see it positively in any way uh, is that people have been forced to readjust or reconsider their career their life path you know and yeah. figure out figure out like a lot of even big companies that are like you know now everybody works from home so we yeah. gotta like re re restructure our entire you know, uh, work system because we yeah. don't have people sticking at home. And what if they have access to private information? Like now, you know, there's just so many little layers of things that uh, can get affected by having to switch everything like this. And and yeah, I think you're doing a good job. I also, you know, I encourage Thanks. you to do, and I'm sure you're already doing it. I'm just going to encourage you to do videos with the, with the gear stuff. Cause that, you know, I just recently had um, fluff from, you know, riffs and beards. Yeah. He, he was he's, on. A, he's a new friend. Like I'm not. He's not like my best bud or anything. I've only met him through the internet, but we just started becoming friends on the internet. So nice, man. Yeah, yeah. he's a good dude, and but he's doing well with that. Like making these videos, oh, yeah. and, you know, demo videos and stuff. So yeah. it's a, it's a new, interesting, uh, I guess, path for musicians to take and, and create. And I hate saying create content, but you know, it's what it is. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It is what it is. You got to create yeah. content somehow. Um, I saw your shirt. I like it. Your shirt is cool. I like the, the NFT. The skull one? Or the they just the NFT? Yeah. With the, it's like a, a Viking runes almost. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I dig that. So yeah, that's the other Thank thing you. too, that people don't do, you know, make shirts for yourself. If people, if you have fans and people that are wanting to, to do stuff with you and are involved with what you're doing, yeah, get some merch out there and do it yourself. It's so easy these days to, yeah. to, to get a design on. If you don't have any artistic skill, fucking hire someone. Reach out to someone like, hey, man, I want a shirt. I'll pay, you know, whatever, 100 bucks. Yeah, exactly. For, for design, you know. It, it uh, becomes worth it. It definitely, at the at the very beginning of lockdowns last year, the the shirts came in came in really clutch for me. I wasn't, like, paying rent solely on shirt, shirt sales or anything, but, like, we, you know, we all needed help, especially us musicians. And I had fans come and buy shirts and like more than I had seen before. Nice. And I, I really appreciated that. But it was, again, it's like you, you have to have that avenue open. You have to allow people to be a part of you and help. You know, if, if you don't, then how are they expected to get a hold of you? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't just sit at home and lock down and be like, eh, you know, the, the, it'll, they'll come to me. It's like, no, you got to put work in, man. You got to, I think this is good for all of us to, to figure out ways to move forward. Cause you know, times will change like they just did and they will continue yeah. to, it's going to happen again. Something else will come along, you know, yeah. and yeah. When you, you can't get caught with your pants down. You gotta be able to adjust and figure it out. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, man. If so, uh, one last thing before we get going, I mean, we still got a little bit more time, but, uh, yeah. if you were to, if you were offered, if you were offered a dream, like fantasy gig to play with a band, what band would that be aside from devil driver? I mean, but it could be any band, any, even if they're dead guys in it, I'll give you, I'll give you two then one alive, <laughs> one active, one inactive band. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I, the, the inactive one would be, I would love to play with all original members of Pink Floyd. Ooh. Okay. That, that would probably be my number one, um, to play a show with, with all those guys would, would definitely be a, a crown <laughs> crowning thing of my life. Um, obviously not going to happen but <laughs> why i don't know i mean that's such that's such a hard one we spend so much time just doing devil driver thinking about devil driver and what where we're going um is there any like band that you listen to regularly that's not devil driver that you're just for your own entertainment purposes like a metallica or something like that oh it's, i mean this just this just gave me the answer she doesn't play with a, a guitarist um and it hasn't in like decades but bjork would be the Ooh. active i would i would love to play like a, an evening with bjork and neil Tiemann would be awesome <laughs> that sounds awesome yeah yeah so you know that that's interesting the two choices you gave were very i guess more 
I don't want to call it soft, but just kind of like melodic, a little slower than a Devil Driver situation. And I've noticed that with a lot of a lot of my my homies that are in bands like that, like Adam Adam from uh, Kill Switch, Adam D. He you know doesn't really go around listening to fucking metal all day. He's listening to Radiohead and shit. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, what is? I mean, I guess I see it as like perhaps you're you're letting out all of your that anger and that heaviness through your music, and so you need the contrast for yourself yeah i mean I, I think you pretty much have it on the head there um most most of the time if i'm at home i'm listening to bjork or lana del rey those are, those are like the, the main two and it's just I'm, I'm wanting something out of music that uh that you know like the new Go gojira can't give me or something you know it's just um nothing nothing against heavy bands it's just that's that's my obviously I've, it's a it's a passion and but it's also my job and especially after some heavy tours there's you don't want to come home and listen to like the newest most brutal thing to come out <laughs> at least I, I don't you know there are yeah. those guys for sure yeah. Um, yeah but just it's not me that's interesting yeah I, I i i'm i don't know i i feel that way sometimes like if i go to a lot of shows back to back uh, heavy shows then i yeah. I'll, I'll spend like a month just listening to like hip-hop <laughs> just yeah. to have the contrast you know just the different it flavors up. man it's good it's i mean you know nachos are great but if you ate nachos for every meal for the rest of your life it would get old very quick and yeah. i would i would shed a tear if i would ever be sick of nachos you know yeah for sure for sure <laughs> so maybe it's just the different flavors to keep it all fresh yeah, it's weird. I, I like I like always mixing it up. I used to try and do that when I would put shows together in Florida too. Like I would put in a you know a metal band and then like a hip hop band and like a jazz band. But it you know the crowds don't really like it when you mix it up too much. I guess it's too it's too varied. Yeah, it's it seems it's specifically in uh, in the United States, people like to when they're going to their show they like to see a, a like at least some similar vein going through it. You know yeah. they can't really. I, I don't know. I don't know why that is either. It's it's a little different in Europe. And like we've played festivals with with hip hop acts and pop bands and stuff, and it's and people love it. And the same people are in there like pitting for us that are like grooving for what whatever pop bands playing. You know later. That's interesting. I've always noticed that too. That that your European fans are, are more open and also more engaged with the music scene, like the festivals. I see all these big festivals happening in Europe now that I'm just jealous of. Like seven days of Hellfest are happening. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. those are the other ones that I'm worried about, frankly, because they're you know like Vakken canceled, mm. um, but that was a huge one coming back, and that's a you know that's a stalwart festival that's always been there. Um, but yeah, that. It, back on track it is for some reason it's a little little more acceptable and, and people are more passionate about I, like i don't know that a seven day festival would work in the united states yeah i don't know that it would probably not <laughs> but there are like as i'm speaking now there are there are festivals like like coachella is mainly one thing but they also have like country acts yeah they have hip-hop they have pop every once in a while they have like a heavy rock band i i can't remember the last time i saw something that was like real like death metal or anything on coachella but like they have, like I think Chelsea Wolfs played Coachella, right? And there's yeah. like some real doomy stuff in in Chelsea Wolf, and so they, there are there are spots. It's not a complete rule uh, across the board, but yeah. for the Bonnaroo, most part, yeah. Bonnaroo kind of mixes it up sometimes. Bonnaroo, yeah, um, and maybe Lollapalooza a little bit. Lollapalooza is yeah. getting weird. I, I I wouldn't. I, it's funny that when you said that, the first thing that came to me, because one of the many things we're rewatching in this whole era, is uh, the Simpsons, and I just watched that um, the Lollapalooza where Homer goes on the road as the getting hit by the cannonball. Mm. Have you ever seen that episode? Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Smashing Pumpkins and Peter Frampton are in it. So I guess <laughs> it's a good. It's indicative of at least two very different things. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Well, so. I guess, you know, my question is now moving forward. You got your videos that you maybe are possibly working on. You've got yeah. Devil Driver. How do you put out, like now having a whole new album and already, like you mentioned, you have 20 whatever riffs for more songs. Like, yeah. what's going to be the approach? Like, hold on to it, put, you know, you know, put some time away for it and, and tour on this new album. Or do you want to do a double album? Like, how, how are you going to approach this? It's so, um, 
con- concerning the record that is already done, like there's a record already done, turned into the label, right? That okay. is the second, the second part of a double album. Mm. So the first album was released last year in October, and then this will be the second installment. Um, the, I mean, the business savvy move is to wait till we can tour around it. You know, um, yeah. I don't. If you're asking just what I want to do, <laughs> I mean, I, I want to put it out. I want to just. I would like to be constantly churning out material, especially if we're home, regardless of the financial damage it may have, you know, I would like to do that. Um, I'm not in charge of those things though. So it's, I, I guarantee you it's going to be, um, it, every once in a while, I mean, Des is the guy to ask if you want a short answer, sure. but um, it seems to be that if you're just going off of his Twitter and stuff, that it's going to come out in 2022. So it won't be this year. Um, which would also make sense again with what I was saying about touring. Yeah, putting off until touring, and yeah. But, but the, I'm, I'm, if we're talking about those demos that I did, then who knows? You know. Yeah. yeah keep them it, in line. It's interesting to see the approach that some bands have taken, where instead of putting out albums, they're you know as they're writing, they're just putting it out like single songs or EPs, yeah. like multiple EPs. Yeah, um, I love that. Yeah, I think I think it, it keeps it fresh too. Because if you hold on to something like look at look at Red Fang recently, their newest album they fi- they finished it in two thousand and eighteen or nineteen, yeah. maybe maybe I'm saying eighteen wrong. It's nineteen, but it just came out. It's been they've been yeah. sitting on that record for two years, and that's nuts. And it's at this point, I'm sure they're tired of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, artistically, I've. I mean, I, I, I don't know how to not turn this into a bad soundbite, but it's just, it's old to me. Like the, the, the guitar parts on the record that hasn't been released yet, that will be released in 2022. Um, I, I finished my guitar tracking for that in 2018. So it will be four years later that that comes out. I haven't listened to it in a couple years, you know, I, <laughs> already. Yeah. So it's, it's not that I'm like moved on or over it or anything. It's just that I, it, it's just, creatively i've been doing other things for years at this point you know and people change um, a lot man like you're a different person than you were four years ago i hope so <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. um that's it's it's one thing i, I know that, that a lot of times it comes to bite me in the ass but it's one of the things that i like to say that i like about life is, is the change at least i know everything's going to change yeah. no matter how bad or good it's going to change um and yeah I would, I would like to think i'm i'm a different person hopefully better than four years so. ago, uh, and, and and guitar wise, I mean, I, I, there is definitely some stuff that I'm really proud of. Um, the last time remembering it on this, on the the one to come, um, every record. I, and I'm sure everybody says this, but especially this double record that we're halfway through releasing. Um, it's definitely the best guitar work I've ever done. Nice, nice. So, I mean, it, that's, at least that's, we all have that to look forward to. If 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 you care about me. <laughs> yeah and, and 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 you know you you say that that everybody says that but it's it's true i mean you 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 evolve you develop you become better at what you're doing the more you yeah. do it so i yeah. I, I i'm not that i expect it's like i'm demanding or i'm entitled or anything but but you know i expect everybody's new work to be their best work you know and 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 go into it with that like happiness of like this is going to be great, you know. Not a positive, yeah. not a negative connotation. Like it's not going to be as good as their first album. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everybody gets that. I just, I, I'm guilty of that too. I mean, and I mean, there's obviously there's a there's a Devil Driver crowd since there's there was a turnover in the lineup. I was, you know, I wasn't the original guitar player, and yeah. it, we even dealt with that for the first year of being like, well, it's not the other guys. Oh, you know? God, it's yeah. Not. <laughs> but, yeah you're right i'm a different person <laughs> this is the change i was talking about yeah man. um but yeah i'm uh, like like i said I'm, I'm just stoked to get it get it out there yeah get any any kind of any kind of work out there now is there any plans for you to do other stuff uh if you see it a lot now with bands doing like beers and bands doing coffee and you know pow- protein powders like is there a, do yeah. you have something in your mind that you want to do that's outside of the realm of music but still will be branded uh, you know accordingly with you right um I, I would i would love to do a beer or wine or like mm. a whiskey that would be that would be really great that would be right up my alley my dad would flip if nice. we did a whiskey um i know there was talk about a uh, devil driver beer 
probably five years ago now, nothing really came of it. I, I think it's just, we, we were talking to, Des was talking to some guys that wanted to just go a different direction entirely. What They wanted to put out some cool hazy IPA and we wanted to go like more like, we just want a new Articate kind of thing. And mm. so it didn't, didn't work. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to be involved with any kind of booze. Um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't really think of anything else completely outside. I mean, it, it all, I, I like to have everything that I'm doing professionally be at least around music. I throw booze in there, not like everybody drinks. I realize no, there's a lot of people that don't, but it's it goes with guitar playing with me. You know, I I grew up drinking beers and playing guitar. Like learning guitar is drinking beers, so it's <laughs> it, it's all it's all a part of it to me. Yeah. Um, so I, I like the connectiveness of that. Um, out, outside of it, I don't I don't know. I don't know that I would like to have like just a, a random separate like. I don't know, enchilada dish at, at Cazuelas down the street or something. You want your like. own uh, hot sauce? Uh, that's a big, that's a popular one. Everybody's got a hot sauce. <laughs> so I, I love hot sauce. I have a tapatio ta tattoo. Um, oh, but okay. <laughs> I don't know that, I, I think I like tapatio so much that I don't need another one. You don't need another one? That's I just good. need a tapatio endorsement. Ah, I, okay. I think they, they have a distribution, distribution thing down the street too. I should just go. Like knock on the door and show the tattoo and see what happens. Play them, uh, play up, make a tapatio guitar. <laughs> yeah, I would totally play a tapatio guitar. <laughs> well, you know, you ran into the right guy. I'm going to show you this. This is our newest, our first official beer with the podcast. So yeah. It's titled, I do not, or I don't really listen to podcasts. That's the name of the beer. <laughs> That's but, great. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. But I was it wasn't like a self-promotional thing. It was just like, hey, I can make beers happen. Yeah. So let's let's Love that. we'll, Love we'll that talk we'll, yeah, we'll talk after the podcast. I got a couple Great. already in the works with other folks so we can make something happen, I think. Cool. Uh, but cool, dude. Thank you, you know, for your time. Thanks for chatting with me for, you know, half an hour and 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 hopefully we can hang out soon. Uh, when shows and everything gets back up and running and things are happening or even outside of shows, man, I just, it'd be cool to reconnect and just hang out, go harass Sasha at the Dunnable guitar shop or something. <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it. I'd love uh, to, yeah, I mean, you know, pleasure is mine, man. It's been fun. Yeah, dude. Uh, everybody that's watching and listening, make sure to follow Neil Effing Teeman. Is it, it's not NFT, yep. it's not NFT, right? Because I see it underneath. It's just, Neil Effing Neil Effing team, yeah. yeah. All right, and and that's on Twitter, that's on Instagram. Uh, you know, look that's out. All I got. For, yeah, look out for the 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 sound package for Devil Driver Sound package. Oh yeah, F STL Tones Neil Team and package. Uh, that's stltones.com. It's where to find it. By the and time this comes it. out, this this by the time this episode comes out, I think the sale will be over. But there is a summer sale, forty percent off uh, right now. Yeah, right now they would yeah. love that. They're, they're loving this plug right now. <laughs> uh anything else you want to plug aside from devil driver everybody that you know that follows devil driver obviously you're, you're going to be following regardless but what, what anything else you want yeah. people to check out um no i mean I have, I have a big cartel store for those shirts that we talked about earlier um i think it's just nteeman dot at dot big cartel dot com i don't know it's it's linked in my bio and all, all my stuff um it's teaman teaman dot big cartel yeah there we go yeah. Um, definitely check out Austin. Our drummer does uh, is on Twitch, like doing just he just hangs out and plays whatever he wants, and it's always awesome. I, I try to check in there as much as I can because I don't see him enough. <laughs> um, so that's always fun. Have um, you tried? Have you considered doing something like that? Twitch streaming? Uh, yeah. See, the whole problem with and also what we were talking about earlier with demos with me, and not to get on this huge. I know we're trying to leave right now, but <laughs> I I just can't. I don't like editing film or doing any kind of videography. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my big um, hang up. If it's with someone else, then it's fine. Like I, I've, we've talked about already of me going down to Austin and just playing with, jamming with him for the, the two hours he does, um, which I'm super into that because that means I don't have to do anything on, on video. Obviously right. I'm being filmed, but I don't have to run any cameras. Um, yeah, that, that's the big hang up if you want to know the truth about all that. Uh, but there, there are easy ways around that, you know? Sure, you can hire interns, man. Get an intern; They'll do it all for you. <laughs> next time, next time I'm on the podcast, I'll have an intern sitting right over there. Oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> all right, brother. Well, hey, it was great catching up, and hopefully, like I said, we'll hang out soon, brother. Likewise, man. I hope so. All right, stay good. 
Later. Cheers.